Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video we're going to start talking about first steps in starting an investigation. So in a previous video I gave you this high-level overview. We said that someone calls you and the first thing you want to do is determine has there really been an incident or are they mistaken and if they have experienced an incident you probably want to start doing some live analysis so today I want to talk about this box figuring out has there been an incident so what's the first thing you want to do well whenever someone calls you you want to open a case file and this doesn't have to be a really formal thing but you should open the case file and start documenting what they tell you so the first thing you want to do is talk to the users you know ask them questions like why did you call me why do you think that there's been an incident or some other kind of problem and then you can ask them about the victim system. You know, what is it normally used for? Is it some sort of web server? Is it a database server? Is it somebody's workstation? What is this computer used for? Um, Where did you get it? Did you buy it at your local store recently? Did you buy it at Staples, Best Buy, or some other place like that? Or did you have it shipped? Was it shipped through Amazon, some other retailer, etc.? Um, did someone fix it recently? Possibly install something on it? So these are all good questions to ask. And of course, as I said, start the documentation process. So where should you write down your notes? You should get your nice bound notebook with numbered pages and write down what users have said so you can record things and you know some of you might think well this is really old school but it is important to have good documentation and it is a lot simpler to simply jot down some notes these don't have to be polished these are just your notes that you can refer to later um, as you are looking at a system as you're doing an investigation and it's not that these notebooks are expensive either so um, so what did they say what do you know about the system and in some cases you might consider taking some photos of the system and the screen if it's appropriate and it's not always going to be appropriate to do this but you know electrons are cheap you likely have a digital camera if nothing else you probably have one on your phone and it's pretty easy to take a couple of photos and it doesn't hurt anything if you never use them so now you're ready to think about actually touching this system so what's the first thing you're going to do the first thing you're going to do is mount your known good binaries so in many cases if you insert a thumb drive or a CD those will be automatically mounted by the system if they're not then you'll have to mount them manually then you want to run your known good shell and then you want to set your path to point to your binaries and then also set the library path to point to the library files on your thumb drive or CD. So let's go ahead and get started and actually do this. So let me go ahead and I have here for our first system an Ubuntu machine and I chose Ubuntu for a couple of reasons Ubuntu is very common and 
that it also makes this very realistic. I, you know, consider <clears throat> maybe one of the smaller Linuxes or a 32-bit Linux, but I think 64-bit Ubuntu 14.04 is a good representation of what you're likely to encounter. So here's my system. And for now, I just want to mount my binaries. So how am I going to do that? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my drive that I created in an earlier video. And in my case here, I'd have just the USB 2, 16 gigabyte cheapy. Um, and I'm going to install it on the system. Now I'm running this system in a virtual box, which you might be as well if you're practicing along with me. So a couple of things you should know about that. Number one, in an earlier video, I recommended that you get a USB 3 drive that you can take with you for incident response. I still recommend that, but you may have some issues mounting the USB 3 drive inside of a virtual machine. So you might also want a USB 2 drive. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my drive. Now, naturally, the host operating system is going to claim that drive. So in order to mount it, I just have to click on Devices, go to USB Devices, and then select my appropriate device. So I've selected my Lexar USB flash drive here. You'll notice that an icon appeared. So in order to mount my thumb drive inside of my virtual machine, I need to insert the thumb drive. And initially, it will be claimed by my host operating system. But if I go to Devices, USB Devices, and I select the appropriate device, it should mount it for me. So I see that it's been recognized. And if I check to see, has it been mounted? I do see that the VFAT partition, the first partition has been mounted, but the second has not. So I will find a place to mount it. So I'll just make a directory mount uh, x64. And I will then mount this. I will mount dev sdb2 to mount x64. I'll just change to that directory. So now I've gone ahead and I've mounted my known good binaries. So I will exec bin bash. So I have a known good bash shell. And now I'm going to set my path. So I'm going to export path equals mount x64, x64 bin and mount x64 x64 s bin now i need to export my ld library path and this needs to point to my libraries that are also on this drive. I'm 
x64, x64, lib 6, 4. And now things should work as I expect them to. I can do a quick check, just run a random command, like if config, and it works because it's getting to my libraries and everything works properly. Great. Well, that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, make sure you tell a friend. We'll see you next time.